Great. Good evening, everyone. On this seventh day of August, we want to be grateful for taking your time. As we continue our mentorship program, now on the sixth week, we will have not made this far if you are not with us. So we take this opportunity to congratulate you for always being there on time to ensure that you are learning with us and you are making use of all that we are sharing. Your experiences, your insights are always taken care of. And that's why we treasure your, your presence. We encourage it and we will always want to keep learning with you. So today we want to move to what we did in get during this week on our WhatsApp that we are going to talk about uh, learning to obey. I don't know what kind of experience you have about obedience. I'm not very sure whether you have liked it or not. But uh, as a start, if you are willing, just unmute yourself and tell us what do you have as an experience around obedience? And why would you think that uh, obedience is very key in our societies, in our families, in our day-to-day -day life? What do you think? And mute yourself, share with us, let us hear from you. An insight about obedience, what do you think about it? Or what have you shared with people about it? What has it done to your life? Has it made any change or not? Waiting for your insight around there. Unmute yourself and share with us. Or is it the first time you are hearing the word obedience? You can also unmute yourself and tell us the first time you heard of the word, what did you think about? Was it something that you were proud of? Was it something that you were reprimanded of? What did it bring to your life? We are on the sixth week, and by now we should be knowing, as you have said, before charity begins at home and the charity begins with that kindness to share what you are what you know what you think there's no right or wrong answer said, so i have admitted mm -hmm. my god so who can help us and give us their insights Good evening, Father. Uh, yes, good evening, Martin. Good evening, Father, and everyone. Oh, Jen, there you go. Yes, uh, Father, good evening. Uh, good evening. I just wanted to say that uh, when we were growing up, um, any, any small mistake was equal to punishment, however small it was. So, um, it, in, you know, it was our responsibility to be obedient, uh, to do the right thing, to follow instructions, um, our parents were not forgiving any small mistake. You have you you know anything you do wrong, you'll be punished. So we learned from you know when you are growing up that uh, being obedient is good. I am seated with a with a child who said, obedience has made me uh, not get into trouble many times. So I think obedience is key, and we all know that obedience is a virtue. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jane, for that insight. 
that uh, when you obey, you avoid trouble. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, Martin, you were on. Oh, good evening, Father. Good evening. And good evening, everyone. I think just to add what Jenna said, I think uh, as we grew up as, uh, as children, we, learned, uh, we, learned, we came to learn that it's been, obedience was just being what you're being told, eh? more so without even a question. <laughs> you know, our parents are so strict those days. So for us to understand obedience was to follow what they're telling us to do and uh, doing the right thing without questioning. As I like nowadays, we find the current generation, they question everything that we tell them to do. And then even the other, the other part that we also came to know of obedience apart from our homes is when we went to school. Uh, I think we, we submitted to authority. What the authority tells you to do, you follow it to the, to the latter. Failure of that, you, you're in bad books. We, we, used to call it the, we used to call it the black books. If you disobey the authority, you're in bad book and it becomes, it starts, it starts a problem to you to you and your parents. So I think it's just a matter of following what you're being told and then even submitting to authority. Thank you. Thank you so much for that insight. You have said it right. And uh, I'm really humbled that uh, you have learned something that is unique. Uh, what you said, and both of you, you have agreed that obedience is directed with punishment or doing is like a command. It's that is the setup we are picking what obedience is. But is this what it should be? In this forum, we want to challenge that notion of always thinking that when we obey, we have to only obey to avoid punishment, or we have to obey commands or we have to obey because we have no otherwise. But what if this aspect of life that is misunderstood is taken into consideration and seeing to it how best we can use it for our well-being, for our connection, for our improvement of our communication, and that's why today I want to invite all of us to deepen our knowledge about obedience, asking the question, why should you obey? How should you obey? And what should you obey? So at the end of the day, you need to answer those questions. The question, especially why we should obey, we are over 18. But when even we are going to talk to our children to obey what we say, what would that mean to them? We want to make this because at the end of the day, it's true. When you obey, you, are, you get away from trouble or you make your life easy. But is that the only thing that we need to do when we talk about obedience? I guess not. I always love also to follow what the scriptures say. You can check this afterwards. It's uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. And it states that, and Samuel said, as the Lord has great right in pound offerings and sacrifices, as in obedience to the voice of the Lord. Surely to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat lamb. Samuel, first Samuel, sorry, chapter 15, verse 22. Therefore, we are in a, an environment where we are being encouraged that in obedience, it's better than giving or offering, or it makes our lives different. So think about that if uh, this is what is found in the scriptures. Look at that time you struggled to obey. Why would it be seen that is a good thing to be done 
And how will you own it? How will you make anyone to obey without regretting or without feeling offended or without pushing them to obey? It's not easy, but it's a learning process which we all can learn, integrate, and teach. Remember in this program, we have always said, we learn, we integrate, and teach. So today, I want to encourage each and every one of us, first of all, to treasure obedience as a God-given gift. It is better than any sacrifice you can ever make. Name it. You know, people talk about, I will sacrifice my money, I will sacrifice my time, I will sacrifice anything else. So when you do obey, and here, get it right, you are obeying the voice of God. You are obeying a, a voice that is not, you know, we can call it a spiritual voice. When you come to ask, what do God expect of me as a human person? How should I relate with people? How should I communicate with people? How should I talk to people? What kind of words should I use? Even when I'm trying to ask them to do something, whether I'm in power or not, especially to our children. And that's why I've always encouraged you, let your children be part of this learning process. As Jen said, someone who was next to her paired witness that by obeying you avoid trouble. It's good also to challenge everyone and especially family members or workmates, friends, when you talk about these deep values. Then when, when we own them, when we adopt them, they become part and parcel of our growth and success. So take it seriously, learn from it, make it yours that in obeying is much better than any sacrifice you will ever make in your life. Now, the question is, how should you obey and what should you obey? Let's keep answering them as we go on. So when we have learned from the scriptures what obedience is, we need all of us, wherever we are, then to come to the awareness to ask, what does this obedience require of us? Remember, obeying is a verb. It's an action we are going to do. What does it demand of us? And here, this is where humility comes in when you say you hold back what you think, you humble yourself, you be ready to listen. In other words, to let the other be as you try to navigate, to hear what they are saying, for you to consider whether you are going to act on it or not. Now, it means that we are going to be involved first to receive from the person who is trying to engage us. So that receptiveness, it's a disposition we all need to participate. It's an awareness we need to create that I need to give you an opportunity first to express yourself and I need to be keen to listen to every word probably you are saying so that I can know what you are saying for me to act on. It will also take us to a further uh, step. If in any case you ask me to do something and I don't understand or have knowledge about it, 
that I can ask a clarifying question of what you expect of me. For example, when I asked you to share with us what you think or what you experience about obedience, you went on and did it. Though we took some time figuring out what it is. But as I said, there's no right or wrong answer because your experience would not my be, be my, my experience. Our experience will not be the experience of the children who are growing now. As Martin said, it's not going to be the same way that when they were asked to do something by the parents, they had no other ones. Today, the children have the other ones. Anyone around us has other ones. They can choose to say no to what you're trying to tell them, or they can decide to cave in and say yes. And I want you, you analyze this. How many times have you said yes that you really don't mean? How many times you have said yes to something that you don't understand? and what has been the consequences. But how many times have you gotten to say yes after understanding and you have kept your yes? How many times we have lost communication with our friends, with our family members, with our children, because we didn't choose well the words we used when we asked them to do something. When people fail to obey what we are telling them, we need to check our language. We need to check our communication skills. We need to check whether what we are asking people to do, whether it's realistic or whether it is of any benefit in their life. Sometimes some, I've realized we ask people too much when we do not even make an effort to try to do what they are, they are expected to do. So please, number two, ensure that you know what is required of you when you are asked to obey. Point number three about obedience is on what again we find in the scriptures. Children are instructed to obey the parents. We can read that in the Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. You can say that it's a right you have as a parent to be obeyed. Or the children have to be submissive to what we say. But is that all? The scripture has it. If the children have to obey their parents, the parents should take caution not to offend them. But is that the case today? How many of us will apologize when we have offended our children? How many of us will excuse ourselves when we want to ask someone to do something for us? Or how many of us will be grateful when somebody has done something we have asked them. What kind of experience do people have with, of us having been asked to do something? Are we bullies? Or are we people who are always caring when we are engaging people in what we do? It's good to look at that and get to the root of it, know what can be done. I guess again, you may be familiar with this story in the book of Genesis chapter 22, and I'm specifically getting to verse seven. Abraham is with the son. Abraham has been asked by God to go and offer a sacrifice. He engages the servant and the son. He gives them fire good and fire to carry, they get to travel to where God instructed Abraham to offer sacrifice. 
on the road, the son asked the father, Dad, we have firewood and the fire. Where is the lamb for sacrifice? Immediately, Abraham says, God will provide. There is some power there. That was a very tricky question. Abraham knew that he was asked to go and offer his son as a sacrifice. What if he said, I'm going to offer you as a sacrifice? What would have happened with the son? Probably there would be no good relationship. Maybe because the son was young, he would have escaped. Or the journey would have been cut short. But because of prudence, Abraham with the son managed to go to the place God instructed. He prepared everything. And because of his readiness to give his only son as a sacrifice, when he was ready, without fear, it is the angel who shouts, do not hurt your son. But you can see both the father and the son are obeying to do what is asked of them until that moment the angel intervenes. So you can see, even when we are asked to do what is beyond our ability, when we have developed that disposition of obeying, of being ready to do what we are asked to do, we do not allow the hindrance that can come from outside to stop us from doing something that it will bring to us reward. So in, in the story of Abram and Isaac, Abram learns or now to teach the son to obey God's voice. But also Isaac gets this first and experience to experience God's presence and God's intervention. So either when we allow ourselves to obey, when we allow ourselves to take some instructions from the right people, when we learn something new, our life changes. And like when we know to do something because maybe we have no knowledge, when we know someone because we think that they cannot tell us anything, when we know something that we have already fires about, we lose an opportunity of learning great lesson. Today, a challenge comes to us that we learn to obey so that we can get the hidden realities, understanding of the life beyond what we know now. So I will wish in this coming week, practice that. How do you become prudent in trying to give the right response to people? But also, how do you learn to just take in the instructions given? There's no wrong if you take instruction. Abraham had no end cause of regret for taking the instructions he was given. Even if it was to hurt the son, but he believed that he was taking instructions from a higher authority. I can assure you, when we also trust a higher authority than us, we will get it right. So, learn as both Abram and his son learn to have a disposition to God 
to his voice. And this is what it brings into our lives some level of intelligence, what we call special, special intelligence. You know, like you can look at reality beyond one angle. These days we, we have the, the image of 3D. In other words, how can we try to look reality from different dimensions? There is something we can try to see with our senses, but there's so much we cannot also see with our senses or understand by our senses when it comes to spiritual realities, when it comes to challenges of life, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to understanding human beings, you can try, you can do your psychology, you can be trained as we are training you here, but there are some cases you will be like, what is it with this person? What have you not done right for them to learn to do things differently? Or what can be done to them? For me, it's a time to realize that that which we struggle to understand, let us leave it to the spirit and let the spirit instruct us. Probably we may be better when we allow the spirit to guide us. So that extra eye, that extra ear, that extra presence we need to create it can change our lives. Think about when you say, okay, I don't understand what you're asking me to do, but let me do it. You will be surprised that in the course of doing it, you will learn something. I wish you accept that. When I started learning to be mentored, there's so much I was told, but I remember one statement that was very key. This mentor told us every now and again, learn a little bit, practice. Learn a little bit, practice. That the knowledge we need to acquire and change our lives is not when you wait for it to come at once, but it's when you take the baby steps, you learn something, you practice, you make it to be part of you, you keep growing now and again. When you do that, I assure you, you will never be where you were yesterday. In other words, I always invite people to do this. Make sure that you do your best today so that you don't spend your tomorrow rectifying your mistakes of today. Don't be so reckless in doing the activities of today such that when you reach tomorrow, you are always asked to go and do what you didn't do right. I guess when we create that awareness again, it will help us to do what we said, to learn, to learn to obey, to learn to take instructions. Point number four, on learning to obey is obedience enhances self-discipline in our lives. And this, again, I can invite you to share with us. Who is the person you have struggled to obey in life? You know, or what moment can you say you had a very difficult experience of obeying. Who is that person you have never had the courage to obey? Anyone who has got an answer to that question? The person you struggle to obey, who is he? And why? You may not tell us why, but for you, 
give us a hint of the person you always struggle to obey and mute yourself and share with us. Are we there? Silence means you have never had a challenge to obey in your life. Maybe if I can ask this way, when we, were you asked that you should not do something, especially what you like most, how did you feel? Or when you knew you have gone to see the doctor and the doctors advised you that if you don't stop taking sugar, for example, or meat, you have got this and this consequences. How did you feel? It is easy then to say, we have issues with people when it comes to obedience. But I can tell you the biggest issues we are of is to obey ourselves. Go back when you have said, I'm going to do this to change my behaviors. I'm going to do this to achieve this. I'm going to do this and that for me to change my life from where I am, where I want to be. I'm going to do this and this to improve my relationship, my communication, my listening. How long did you follow those instructions? Did you obey that voice? I can assure you, the most difficult person to obey is our own self. The discipline to commit yourself, you know, to set goals and follow them. To set parameters to guide you to realize your goals. Yeah, people can ask us to do big things, whether we want to avoid trouble, yes or no. But I want to come to each and every one of us and ask, there are those things you have always wished to change in life. Why have we not changed them? Why are we still struggling with the same things we have sung for years to change? I want to believe that it's because we have failed to obey that inner force. Every one of us has got an inner voice that directs us that needs to elevate us. At least, unless I obey what I said for myself, I will never become better than I am today. If I don't obey that every Sunday, I need to create time to be with you online, I will not make a difference. So I want you to look at it again in your life. What is that you have always sung about that you want to change? and you have never changed, you can start making a difference today. And if you do, we will love to congratulate you when you do that. And mostly when it comes to our health, I remember very well, 2009, up to 2010, I had a very bad stomach issues. I did use H. pylori for a good time. Until one day I was asked to do an endoscopy. The first one I did, they said there is something in the stomach, but they were not so sure what it was. They gave me medication. I finished, things never got well. The second one I was given is to go and repeat the endoscopy. It's not a good experience, by the way. If you can avoid it, you can. By avoiding what I'm going to tell you. So in that process, I went to Aga Khan for an endoscopy. So this day I'm going to get the results and the doctor asked me, what did you say your problem was or is? I said, I have this and that. I tried to become a 
a doctor to explain what I had no knowledge of. But the question the doctor asked, I'd already failed something. I had no problem, but I could not believe it. So the doctor went on to say, you are okay, your stomach has no problem. You have only one condition that you need to take care of. You have a lot of acidity in the stomach that you need to take caution of what you eat, especially acid foodstuffs. At one time, I thought that he was joking. But it, the doctor took time to explain to me what he, he meant about this acidity in food. And once I decided to obey what I was told, since then, today, I can talk about 12 years. I can manage my stomach upsets without getting to the hospital. I'm very cautious to avoid some things because I know what they can cause to my life. In other words, I've regained my health. I have avoided running to the hospital now and again because I did obey the instructions of the doctor. So today you obey, the second thing he told me, apart from the food stuff, you need to manage your stress. Because when you are stressed, you allow the acidity to pour into your stomach. And that causes the pain that I was having sometimes. And I realized it was true. That time I could be annoyed of anything. But I could not know that this is causing harm to me until I got to the hospital and I was shown that if I don't do this, these are the consequences. Ask yourself, what are you ignoring and it's costing your health? Or what are you going to work right and improve your health? Are you going to obey that you need to do some exercises? Are you going to obey that you need to reduce your weight? Are you going to obey that you need to take health foods? Are you going to obey that you need to take enough rest? Are you going to obey that you need to avoid what's supposed to be avoided in your circumstances for you to be in good health? I don't know. But I can tell you, I did obey. Today, I have got good health. At least in that, I said bye-bye to H. Pyrori, and it has worked. How many people are depressed today? What happened? Or how many people can we save from depression if we teach them not only to be cautious of what happens in their lives, but to make the right choices, to avoid some things from happening. You know, sometimes it becomes normal to say it did happen. And we fail to ask this question, what did I do for it to happen? an invitation to assess all that happens for our good health and the health of others. Let us get to be disciplined. Let us get to deepen our knowledge of what we need to do to enhance our health, or the health of the people around us, or trying to avoid people getting ill because we are not so keen or so caring. Number five, obedience helps us to be connected with others. It's simple. When you have been given some instructions and somebody else has been given, if we all obey, we have something in common. We are on this forum because we obeyed to create time 
to be here to share our experiences. So through that simple act of obedience, we are connected. We can allow this obedience to work for us in our families. We just need to set and say, we will be eating together. And in the process of eating together, if everyone else obeys that, we build our relationship. We will take away the phones. We will take away the TVs. We will be there watching each other, enjoying their meals, sharing stories, and building a new our relationship in families. So as one of the things that is said in the Convention of the Rights of the Children for Africa is the consideration that our cultures matter a lot in our well-being. When you talk about obedience, as we started by Martin and Jen, there are those things we have been taught by our parents. Today, young people do not know why they should sacrifice to come to the dining area and get food, eat with other people there. We need to go back to those kind of practices to rebuild our togetherness. It's also in the same document of the rights of the children where it says, we need to protect the families in Article 18. Because the family is the smallest unity of the society. So we need to go and question what goes on in our families. Those of you who have started reading my new book, The Listening Leader, you will find so many stories that I've narrated about my family. What stories do you have about your family? What are you building or what are you allowing your family experience? Can it be that in that more unity of the society is the very best place everyone else would want to be? If that is the case, what should we do to pull people to obey what we have said as a family, whether it is annual gathering, whether it is eating together or whether it is coming together to solve the family problems. You can set it, you can reserve that place of the family, it will always make a difference. But also the same document, when it talks about the rights of the children, emphasizes, of the parental care, that every child has the right to be taken care of by their parents. And every child has the right to stay with their parents. These days, there's something I've never understood how it came to our families. When you hear your children telling you, mom, dad, I'm going for a sleepover. I remember when we were young, if we had to go and visit the relatives, you will go there, but you will make sure that the day you are asked to come back, you have to report back. It was just once in the pool. Today, your child can tell you they are going for a sleepover. Even to somebody you do not really trust whether they will take care of your children. You end up exposing your children to people who least care about their well-being? Ask yourself, how caring are you as a parent? Are your children safe? Are you exposing them to the people who cares about their well-being? And how are you trying again to create that safe environment around your children? Again, as Africa community, we have what we call Agenda 2040, 
aspiration number two, where as a continent, we are looking forward to have an effective child-friendly national registrations, policies, and institutions with frameworks that we will go like every country in Africa, for example, that enhances this kind of protection of children, the well-being of children, saving children from any harm, or in other words, serving the children in the very best. We are already 2022. I don't know if you assess today how safe are our children in this country how are, uh, what are you doing to create safety, not only to your children, but the children of the neighbors? And lastly, we are what Africa is looking up to. The Africa we want, an agenda of 2063. One of the aim for the countries in Africa is to have a development of people driven, relying on their potentials of people in Africa, and especially relying on the women, youth, and children. All these are aspirations. All these are wishes we have. All these are like goals set. The question is, in your society, in your surrounding, how ready are you to involve women to do what they are supposed to do to make lives better? Or as a woman, what are you doing to make contribution to the development of your family, of your community, and of the society at large? Or as a young person, what are we doing to them so that they may become part and parcel of contributing to the well-being and development we desire. And for the long-term development, we need our children. How much are we investing in the right education? What kind of skills are they learning for them to reach where they are supposed to be? How good are we to guide them to navigate to become what God created them to be? Or how ready are we to train them to obey, especially when they go to work with people, they realize that people would have different issues, but when they identify the right people to obey, they will be guided to reach their greatest goals. One thing all of us in this platform we are benefiting is the sacrifice we are making now and again to keep instructing each and every one of you on how to make life choices. This we have done and we're going to continue to do it. But also we keep questioning what kind of these life choices we have to make. Like as I just said, when your child talks about sleep over. Do you question it? Do you think about their safety? Do you wish that that is not the priority? And it can't be only if there is no other way of having them involved in other things. So when we get to discuss and get ourselves into such a sharing, we trust. You would have no doubt to obey what we are sharing. When you would love to obey what we are sharing, the challenge would be go and teach others to obey what you will be sharing. Go and be trusted. Go and make everyone else around you to feel that is worthy to be connected with people who obeys certain values, who treasures, or who have developed 
certain dispositions that unites people. On that, I come to the end of today's presentation of five main key points. We started with learning to understand obedience in the scriptures. Number two, learning to know what obedience requires. Number three, learning why children should obey their parents or their elders. Number four, being obedient, we enhance our self-discipline. And lastly, in obeying, we get connected. I hope that makes a lot of sense in your life. I hope that is going to contribute on how you look at reality. And I want to believe that is going to enhance your health, your relationship, and your well-being. And not only your well-being, the well-being of your family. Thank you so much for your audience. It's time to hear your comment. It's time to get your questions. It's time to get anything that you have to let us know. Unmute yourself, share with us. Unmute yourself and share with us. I always encourage that online, silence is good, not for long. And it's always good to learn to be charitable. Once I've shared that, now it's your time. Yes, Rosemary. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. This is to thank you, Father Dennis. I've learned a big lesson today, something that I've never, that has never crossed my mind, that uh, the person that we have failed to obey is ourselves. <laughs> That was a great, great lesson for me. I've never thought along those lines. And that would help me to be examining myself even more and asking myself, am I really obeying? My little voice inside there, Ali, am I really obeying myself? Thank you. You're welcome, Rosemary. Sometimes you can never know whether you are obeying yourself unless you are guided. It's not easy. So please. Accept also to know that you can only know how to obey yourself when you get to be guided. So I'm humbled that you have learned something new. Anyone else? Unmute yourself and share with us. Good evening. What did you learn? Good evening. Good evening. Okay, for me, I've learned a uh... Obedience, it is should start with me. And before I go to the other people, I should be in a position to understand myself, to be myself, to listen to myself. And this will help me to keep uh, that connection between me and the other people. And thank you for this input. Thank you so much for that appreciation. Yes. When we obey, as we did say, we get to in an environment where we have like-mindedness. Sometimes we resist obedience only to lose opportunities of getting better. If you teach that to someone today, you will have become a caring listener, creating impact in your society, in your family, in your community. Anyone else? Thank you for those comments coming through. Who else has learned something today? Or who was disappointed with today's lesson? You can also admit yourself, you say, today, Father, you wasted my one hour and I will apologize. Good evening, Father. Good evening, Rhoda. Uh, I start by saying thank you very much for for the, for the for the teaching you are really enlightening us 
And I can say I learned about connection with others. When I obey, I connect with others. That one I think I did know, and I am very happy about it. I will be, <laughs> I'll take care. And also for the, for the, for the, for obey, we, 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 we don't obey ourselves. The inner self that we don't obey, it is also very important because I was thinking about maybe not employing, I, I am obeying my employer or, you know, the people we stay allowed with, but I don't obey myself. It is very important. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I will always tell you, we struggle to obey others because we have not learned to obey ourselves. It's like, you can't give what you don't have. You can only love people if you love yourself. You can only love or value obedience if you have known what it can bring to your life. Or when you have changed the perspective of what it means to obey. Remember what we started with, that we obey to avoid trouble, but we didn't see it that when we obey, it's going to be of our advantage. It's going to connect us. It's going to take us the world we least expected. Again, as I said, to learn to obey yourself, we need to be guided. Even me, sometimes I fail to obey myself and somebody has to remind me, do you know what you said, Dennis? You need to go up to it. Thank you. Four minutes to go. Anyone else who has a comment? Yeah, good evening, Father. It's Jenna. Um, Jenna. For me, it's the self-discipline. Self-discipline is what I've learned. There are many things that I say I will do, and I've never looked at them like lack of obedience or, or lack of self-discipline. So I've really learned that, you know, there are goals, there are, there are things that I say, maybe, for example, I'll wash my clothes today before end of day, but I keep saying, oh, tomorrow is still, there's still another day I can do it. So self-discipline is, for me, I've taken it as a lesson uh, that I will always check what have I said I will do and have I done it, uh, which, you know, boils down to being obedient to myself. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Jen. And that's why we say we plan. And by planning, nothing can happen if we do not obey what we are put down to do. Again, we said in this 12 weeks program, it is going to end on 18th of September. And I try to encourage every one of you, by that time, all of you, you will be smarter than you were 12 weeks ago. So, I do not take it for granted. I always treasure the commitment everyone makes, but what if I'm not committed to what I've said? Would you be coming to this line to learn? I doubt. But when you are seeing the fruits coming, I guess you will be even more, be motivated to keep learning, integrating, and teaching others. And that is my dream and that is your dream. And that is the dream of all those who are waiting for us to instruct them. They will obey. So become a good teacher. <laughs> Anyone else? Two minutes to time. Thank you, those who are appreciating on the chat box. I didn't know that not all of us knew that obedience is key in our lives. The inner voices. Yes, somebody with uh, who is this was unmuted. This is Sister Mary Irene. Oh, Sister Mary Irene. Yes, I I want to say thank you, Father, for uh, obedience that you have shared with us. Uh, I just to. Uh, would uh, I was um, looking forward to you saying more on humility and listening because I I felt that uh, also uh, obedience for obedience to be successful there is a great need of humility on the part of each one of us because something has to die inside us so that uh, you know we can accommodate other people's opinions and ideas and. Uh, 
that is where I uh, I need to obey to take uh, you know to be able to give other people also rooms uh, in terms of ideas you know when we we obey especially uh, in a group then I uh, uh, let my idea maybe that is not so smart so that other people's ideas you know can be taken in and I felt that that is also very important uh, in terms of humility to let my ideas go and uh, allow others uh, if I find they are more smarter than mine so that uh, I can adapt others so but that also calls for a lot of uh, listening uh, very attentive listening and uh, I I appreciate the fact that you say obedience helps us to be connected with others. That is very true. And that's where I'm talking on humility. Thank you very much. You're right, Sister Mary Irene. And I did indicate that when we read from past Samuel, that uh, unless we have that a humble disposition and the listening ear, maybe you are not joined, from the beginning yeah, of yeah. our discussion. Yes, yes, I came late, sorry. Mm. No, it's okay. So mm. obedience, yes, it can never be possible without first letting yourself know that you are to take in the instructions. And you can only take in instructions. As I said, if you listen well, if you do not understand what you have been asked to do, you ask a clarifying question and it will be said to you. So there we are. Thank you. Thank you so Great. much. You're welcome. Good people, I love this. We can go on and on. It's already seven in the evening. Unless you have a panning question or comment, we want to let it reach there. It's a fireplace. It is always keeping us warm especially this cold season. But as we go to this coming week, I want to invite you to practice that through obedience, to let obedience lead you to new connections. Letting that obedience help you get accomplishing some of the goals that you have set. When you see things are not working, know that you are not obeying what you have said to do. Sometimes we may be inclined to listen to so much of ex external and fail to listen to our inner being. And when we listen to our inner being, we are not only listening to what we are telling ourselves, but we are listening to what God expects of us. So when you want to know exactly what should happen in your life or the inner voice, it cannot be complete unless it's connected with God or the purpose that God expects of us. So please go on this week, make those practices, teach someone else to do that and share your experiences as we go on. Wishing you all the very best. Have a peaceful evening and night, a fruitful week until we meet the same place, same time with your friends, with your children, and with those people you love, and you will want them to know what you are doing. I'm humble. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now, it now, shall be, all without end. The Lord be with you. And with you. And, with you. and may Almighty God bless you, Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.